What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with John Jones goes on rant, then deletes it. There was a time when John Jones would frequently make headlines for late night tweets that he would quickly delete. For a while, it seemed to be a game of sorts within the MMA community to see who would get a glimpse or a screenshot of one of Jones's tweets before it was erased. Now, the heavyweight champion does far less tweeting and deleting than he did in his younger days. However, after Tom Aspinall's callout following his UFC London win over Marcin Tibera, Jones posted a series of tweets that have since been deleted. Fortunately, we have the screenshots. In his first tweet, Jones wrote, Sometimes I feel like I've been in a deja vu. Everyone's going to be the guy to kick Meanwhile, I'm over here undefeated with a face full of gray hairs. In a following tweet, he wrote, Half the time the guys talking the most crap don't even end up winning their next fight. I've been around this game for a long time. Over the years, I've learned not to get all impressed so quickly. Stick around. Win consistently like I have and then talk your before calling it a night, Jones posted one final tweet, writing, Everyone's the next big thing until I beat them. And then it's like, well, who was that guy anyway? Just a few months ago, Gon was the absolute future of MMA. Best footwork, fastest heavyweight we have ever seen. The most athletic. Now, everyone's like, who the hell is that guy? The tweets drew the attention of Aspinall, who simply tweeted, John, chill out, mate. As Aspinall has revealed following his win over Tibera, his plan is to challenge the winner of the upcoming UFC Parish Clash between Cyril Gan and Sergei Spivak before setting his sights on Jones. Whether or not we get to see a clash between he and John Jones before the champion retires, only time will tell. Popular Flyweight Removed from UFC Roster News surfaced this week that popular flyweight Tyson Nam had been removed from the UFC's roster following his UFC fight night home versus Bueno Silva loss to Azat Maksim. The controversial split decision marked Nam's second straight loss inside the octagon, bringing his promotional record to 3-5. and five. As a result, he has now seemingly been handed his walking papers from the UFC. Nam himself took to Twitter to retweet the news, indicating to fans that his removal from the UFC's active roster may not simply be a case of a fighter fighting out the remainder of their contract and then re-signing with the promotion. At 39 years old, given his apparent release, many are wondering whether or not Nam could wind up retiring from the sport for good after a lengthy career spanning from 2006 to 2023. Ben Askren and Jorge Masvidal trade barbs on social media. Although Ben Askren and Jorge Masvidal are both retired, the former 1FC champion and BMF have continued to find themselves in headlines this week as the two debate the idea of a rematch. During an interview with TMZ Sports, Masvidal, who recently hung up the gloves after its fourth straight loss, said that he'd heard Askren was willing to come out of retirement to fight him. He responded by countering, calling Askren out for a boxing match. My a bank is my coming out of retirement, I'll send you right back in there, mother this guy, bro. <laughs> when Askren caught word of the comments, he posted a screenshot of a text exchange with Dana White, saying he would be willing to fight Masvidal while dismissing the former BMF's offer to box against him. As he went on to point out, he's kept up with training even in retirement, but has no desire to return to active competition to fight anyone but Jorge Masvidal. For his part, Masvidal posted a picture punching Askren on Instagram after his flying knee KO along with the caption, this guy's still alive? Whether all this talk is just posturing, we'll have to wait and see. Colby Covington goes off on Bilal Muhammad. Controversial welterweight number one contender Colby Covington recently took the stage at Turning Point USA's Chapter Leadership Summit. With his upcoming clash against Leon Edwards expected to take place at UFC 295 later this year, it's no surprise that Covington's title fight and his ongoing beef with Bilal Muhammad were among the topics brought up by fans. When it came to Muhammad, Covington pretended not to know him before then taking aim at the streaking contender. That's the guy that said I'm getting a title fight because of the color of my skin because I'm white. Yep. He said I have white privilege. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't think much of that guy. He'd get smacked in the mouth if I saw him in the face to face, that's for sure, but as many fans were quick to point out, Covington was seemingly offered a fight against Muhammad earlier this year, but wound up turning down the fight. Back in March, Muhammad produced screenshots indicating he accepted a fight against Covington and was waiting to hear back. However, about never materialized. Do you think we'll ever see a situation where Covington and Muhammad compete against one another? Chael Sonnen returns to desk at UFC 291. Former UFC title challenger Chael Sonnen recently reached a plea agreement in his legal case stemming from a series of altercations at a hotel last year. As a result, Sonnen will be back in the broadcasting booth for this weekend's UFC 291 card as a desk analyst. His return will mark his first appearance since the UFC 272 card back in March of 2022. Alongside Sonnen, fans will have the chance to see Michael Eves, Anthony Smith, 
and Dean Thomas on the desk, with Daniel Cormier and Joe Rogan joining John Anik in the play-by-play -play booth. With Sonnen's legal troubles now behind him, expect to see the former title challenger back in action on future cards as well. Paulo Costa issues warning to Hamza Chimaev. Recently, news surfaced that popular middleweight Paulo Costa will return to the octagon at UFC 294 to compete against Hamza Chimaev in a pivotal middleweight bout. Given the pair's past beef that saw them get into a heated exchange at the UFC PI, and the fact that the bout will see the winner enter the title picture at 185 pounds, it's no secret that the stakes will be at an all-time high. With both men eager to return to the octagon and continue their quest for middleweight gold, Costa issued a strong warning to the undefeated two-division contender. Training hard every single day. Every single day. I have no days off. Look at this face. Look at this face. Look right here. Go make sure to the man who's gonna kill you. <laughs> Although Drakus Duplessis is still expected to get his crack at the title after Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland fight at UFC 293 in September, the winner of the upcoming Costa vs. Chimaya fight could wind up either being named as the middleweight number one contender or being one win out from a title fight. When the two men step into the octagon in Abu Dhabi, how do you see things playing out? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Brendan Schaub and Dustin Poirier analyze BMF title fight. With fight week underway, the MMA community is eager to see Dustin Poirier and Justin Gagey compete in part two of their thrilling 2018 clash. With Gagey showing improved footwork and a newfound sense of patience, and Poirier still at his best, the rematch seems all but guaranteed to produce fireworks. Ahead of the event, UFC veteran Brendan Schaub spoke in a video for his YouTube channel, where he discussed the advantage Poirier has going into the fight. Poirier is a better overall fighter, strength of schedule is better, his wins at the highest level are better. Um, I know Justin Gaethje does well in the chaos, I know he's, they say he's a changed fighter, I don't know if I believe that. From the sound of things, Dustin Poirier doesn't seem to care about whether or not Gagey is entering the contest as a changed fighter. During an interview with the New York Post, he welcomed a more patient approach from Gagey, saying it plays to his hands. I mean, if it's a slower fight and a more technical fight, I think I win smoother there. You know, I think his chance of beating me is the dogfight if he tries to. With just days to go until the two men step into the octagon, who do you think gets the job done? Drop your predictions in the comment section down below. And now for our breaking news story of the day. We have Joe Rogan praising Conor McGregor. In a recent podcast, Joe Rogan said that he loves everything Conor McGregor has done and would love for him to be a guest on his podcast soon. It's important to note that Joe has been wanting Conor to be a guest on his pod since 2013, but Conor has never accepted his invitation. Here's what Joe had to say. I would have thought that you'd probably be more into the understated guys. No, no, I'm all into whatever the f you're into. Like, <laughs> I like that Conor McGregor wears diamond encrusted watches and drives around a Lamborghini <laughs> yacht. I can love it. Right. I know I know that dude grew up poor. That dude was, uh, was struggling early in his MMA career and wasn't even sure if he was going to continue fighting. Right. I became a fan of his watching him fight in the UK. I uh, watched him fight on, on YouTube and I reached out to him like 2013. I sent him a message saying, I hope uh, one day you can come over to the UFC. Love to love to see your fights. I knew he was legit, like back then. There's something special. He's been on this show many times. No, he hasn't been on the show ever. Oh, no kidding. No, I definitely have him on though. I love the guy. I love that he's wild. I love it. I like wild guys. Do you want to see a Joe Rogan and Conor McGregor collab podcast? Let us know what you think in the comments below. We might just get one soon.